the last thing that I might think about, right, and I'm going to kind of scoot this over here just a little bit, is I might think about the fact that I still feel like I have some of these kind of like herky jerkies. This -da 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 -da. My animation doesn't feel very smooth. Right, and part of that is what's happening here with the information that's coming in from our chop, right? Like this is moving really nice and fast and that's great. But I might want to have that smoothed out just a little bit here, right? Uh, and there's a few ways we could do that. We could use some smoothing here in the actual connect, uh, connect top. We could push on this a little bit. So we could smooth our data there. We could even push it up even harder. That's, you know, this is pretty fine grain stuff. We might not worry about smoothing. We might instead think about our, our jitter. Maybe we want, want to reduce the amount of jitter in here. You know, this is, you can kind of futz with a lot of these parameters uh, a whole lot uh, to try and find something that's just right. If we want to do a kind of brute force uh, approach to this, we might instead scoot this right on over. Uh, we might insert a filter. And if you're saying what's a filter, actually that's an excellent question. Let's look at that first. A filter chop, one of my favorites, uh, does some beautiful things for us. <coughs> And we might best see that by adding a constant. We'll plug our constant into our filter. We'll add a trail. A trail is going to help us see changes represented over time. Our filter can go in the first input. Our constant can go in the second input. And in our constant, let's go ahead and change our value to 1. And there we can see really the root of what's going on. So while our channel has snapped right away. The filter is doing this nice Gaussian interpolation for us, right? It's giving us a nice smooth movement between our changes. Now we might want to do something like turn down the, uh, the filter width, right? Like how much time it takes for that to happen. So here that's still real sharp, but we still have a nice kind of ease in, ease out shape there. And if we instead plug our connect into our filter and disconnect this we'll see that now as we're kind of filtering these samples we get something that's not quite so herky-jerky we get nice kind of smooth movement it's still pretty close right it's not like right on top of me the way that it was before so it makes the, the sensor feel like it's lagged just a little bit um, but in this case, I like that because it gives us, for this particular aesthetic, right? This all depends on like what you're building and what you want it to look like. But for this particular aesthetic, it gives us this nice, wispy, kind of drifty feel, which is what I'm uh, kind of after here with what we're building today. So there you have it. We've, uh, in this case, we've kind of gone from beginning to end at looking at how we take in some raw connect information here. Um, push that data around a little bit, turn it into a set of uh, multi-sampled channels. Use that to do some instancing, right? We can see over here, again, that we're drawing our skeleton, uh, our, drawing our joints. Then we do a whole series of post-process effects to kind of end up with the final kind of aesthetic uh, construction that we ended up with here. So I hope that is useful to you folks. Thank you so much for letting me use so much of your time and occupy so many of your cycles, and happy programming.